The Make Noise Woggle Bug contains three sections, the audio section, the control voltage section, and the clock section. In this first video, we're going to be talking about the bottom section of the module, which contains all the functions related to the internal clock. It's the easiest section to understand as the module gets progressively weirder the higher you go. The clock has two inputs, two outputs, two knobs, and one freeze or disturb button. The lower right output is the master clock. It's a stable-ish clock that goes from very slow rates into the audio range. At its slowest setting, I timed it at about a minute and 15 seconds between pulses. Here's a straightforward example of the master clock activating the strike input on the low pass gate. The speed is controlled by the lower knob. The upper knob has two functions. With nothing plugged into the speed jack, the upper knob acts as an offset to further increase the clock speed. With both controls at full, the manual says the clock can reach about 200 hertz. The second output of the clock section is the burst or bevursed output. This puts out gates at random intervals and lengths. The rate of the burst output is directly related to the master clock speed. The two knobs function in the same manner as described for the master clock. One of my very first videos shows how to achieve a random gate signal using maths and a noise source. Using this output is way easier and you don't have to sit through 20 minutes of me trying to sound intelligent. It should be noted that both the burst output and the master clock are indicated by LEDs which are behind the panel and therefore look cool as hell. The upper input on the clock section is the speed control. This offers voltage control over the master clock speed. With a cable inserted into the speed jack, the upper knob now functions as an attenuator for that signal. In this example, I have an envelope for maths raising and lowering the clock speed. This knob now acts as an attenuator for the signal that's coming in. So now you have a clock that's completely under voltage control. One note about the speed input, as well as many of the inputs on the Woggle Bug, is that it only responds to positive signals. A negative voltage will not modify the clock speed. The lower input of the clock section is the external clock input. This is where things start to get weird. You can use any external clock you want, but it doesn't affect the master clock. Note the blue LED. The blue LED is an indicator for the internal sample and hold. When you see the blue LED flash, a new value is sampled and held. This rate can be different from the master clock. Note that the voltage control section will still affect the master clock if you have an external clock input, but it will not have any effect on the sample and hold rate. If you want to modulate that, you will have to modulate the incoming signal itself. Without an external clock, the sample and hold will be timed with the master clock, which you can see with the blue and LED reds being in sync. Here I'll take the end of rise signal from maths and put that into the clock. And you can see, I'll shorten up that a little bit, but you can see that now we have two different rates. So the sample and hold is only going to get a new value every time you see the blue LED flash, while the master clock is going quite a bit faster. And no matter what we do to the master clock, the sample and hold rate is going to be the same when I have that external clock. Finally, the clock section has a disturb button, which can be used to freeze the value of the sample and hold at any given time. We'll cover the sample and hold more in the next video, but the top window LED shows a rough value of the sample and hold. And you can see that when we press down the button, that value is held regardless of what happens with the clock. The master clock output will remain active even while the button is held down. The disturb button will, however, freeze the burst output while the master clock continues. Sometimes an extra trigger or two will get through uh, even after you press the button, but that's because the woggle bug does what the woggle bug wants to do. We don't really give it orders as much as suggestions. The next two videos will illustrate how the clock section can affect the rest of the module. Aside from just acting as a master clock, the main output can be used as an audio source. 
As I mentioned before, the clock can reach up to 200 hertz, which is about the G below middle C. This means that the Wogglebug clock output could be used as a base audio source, especially if you don't care about pitch or tuning. Here's an example where I'm modulating the speed, which therefore adjusts the pitch, using an envelope for maths, and then this sound that you're hearing right now is the clock output of the Wogglebug going into the low pass gate. So as you can hear, this could be used as a kind of drone audio source or anything where you're really not too concerned about being in a particular pitch. So that does it for the clock section. In the next video, we'll talk about the second section, uh, which goes over all of the CV.